Well, hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny, and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. I thought it would be nice to have a small 172 scale tank to go in our LCM3 that we just finished. So, <laughs> the one that I could find is this one right here. And it is a trumpeter kit, and our LCM3 is also a trumpeter kit. So, hopefully, no scale difference between their two 172. Second scale kits. <laughs> so this is their M4 tank mid-production, which is really an M4A2. And like I said, it's in 172nd scale. Uh, this is the actual tank that would have been used in the Pacific by the Marines. And I think it's also an export tank that was sent to the Soviet Union during World War II. So let's jump down to the bench and take a look at what's in this kit for us. All right, let's take a look at our M4 tank mid-production by Trumpeter here. Uh, length is 80.39 millimeters. Width is 37.73 millimeters. Parts is 80 plus. Wow, that's a lot. And it's 172 scale. Detailed scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. Uh, on this end of the box, it just shows our profile of the vehicle. Um, which you can use, I guess, for maybe decal locations. And made in China, Trumpeter, copyright 2018. And then on the end of the box, of course, we have our kit number 07223. A little profile there of an actual built model. That's nice. And over here we have some history and, uh, well, let's see, uh, M4 medium and welded hull, whirlwind radial engine, uh, it just describes our, our vehicle, and uh, it also has it in Chinese. And it says, this product is suitable for ages over 14 only made in China. This product is not a toy. And here's the other end of the box, same as the previous. So there we go. Now we can just jump into it here and take a look at what's... Well, I did not look. Yeah, nothing on the back. <laughs> Worry does go to dump something out there. This way Trumpeter has bagged everything up. So we have a bag here. And it looks like the sprues are all bagged up separately inside it. Very small hole there. Bathtub style. And we got some instructions here. And I uh, don't see any decals. I guess they're in the bag. So let me open up this bag and uh, we'll see what this is all about. Caught my scissors there. I didn't want to cut. So we have our sprues here, we have rubber band style tracks, and there's our decals or decals. And we got a lot of different road wheels and stuff here. So, I mean for the size of the, the model, uh, it actually has some nice detail. We've got a uh, bolt pattern here on our access cover there. Actually, I need to change this. Hang on. There we go. You can see that better and it won't be blurry. So, in this smaller scale, as you can imagine, there's a big seam line there to clean up. But a lot of the details are just molded straight in to the vehicle. Not a lot to see there. Do have our mounting plates already molded in there. We do have that stiffener for the hull that's on there. Not a lot to see there, is it? It is a small vehicle. So when it comes to our sprues, this is our A sprue. And we have different types of road wheels. So these are our idlers here, and these are road wheels that are the pressed metal type. 
or idlers pressed metal type. These are our road wheels pressed metal type, as you can see there and there. These are the earlier versions, which are the cast ones, I think, that are the five spoke type. And there is some flash down inside there, as you can see. But for such small parts, uh, it's really kind of nice detail there. Then we have our drive sprockets. These are the back halves of the drive sprockets. And again, there is some uh, flash, as you can see there. Our early style drive sprockets there. And then over here we have our bogies. For our road wheels, the, the uh, return rollers are already molded right into the part. And then this is the second half to sandwich those together to put in whatever road wheels that you're going to choose. Whether it's going to be the spoked ones or the um, uh, pressed ones here. And that's sprue A. In addition to sprue A, we do have this sprue here, which is T2. And these bogies are all molded up with the early style uh, uh, road wheels already in them. So I guess if you wanted to go this route, you have the option of not having to put together the, uh, the bogies from the A sprue, which are multiple piece. And on the back side, just the connection points. And that's it. So basically clean up a seam line all the way around it, and you're pretty much ready to go, I guess. I don't see a lot of flash on this particular sprue, a little bit there, but uh... so those are the road wheels and uh, bogies and drive sprockets and return or idlers, all in one there. There we're good. Next up is our D sprue. Here is our back uh, armored hull section. This would be uh, the vent, I think, up on the engine deck. We have a couple of crates there. That's nice. We also have some the, the new style uh, drive sprockets there. Air cleaners. Here's that rear section that goes on the back of the upper hull. Uh, has our track adjusting wrench and our sledgehammer already molded in. That looks like an antenna base. Uh, these are armor plates right here. If you can see them. These would be welded on to the front of the hull. We also have fuel cans and some other cans there. Here's our towing panel. Fuel caps. Not sure what those are. I think these are the side wings that goes on to uh, the rear of the hull there. And we also have our crank. <laughs> Surprise that we have fuel cans and, and uh, crates and stuff in a kit this small. On to the main hull, upper hull here. You can see that the greatest majority of the details are molded straight in and the lifting eyelets here as you can see are not uh, they're not molded through but you can take care of that when we build this we probably will we'll probably drill those out and then all your tools are molded straight in not the greatest of detail it would have been nice if these had been separate parts but uh, since they're molded in, uh, we'll have to <laughs> obviously paint them on the vehicle. So, uh, no real detail on the backside. Our fuel cans, though, are 
detailed on both sides, so that's nice. All right, so that's D. And then here is sprue E. So this has our turret. It has the extra armor plate there. Already molded in. Now when it comes to these lifting points here, you can opt to... You can cut these off if you want to and just uh, do some wire. We may do that. Uh, there's there and this one and the one on the other side there. A little bit of flash there where the mold seam came, came together. But I am astonished at how much detail they managed to pack into uh, such a small kit. I mean, that turret is barely bigger than my thumbnail so <laughs> then we have the lower portion of the turret we have uh, is that two different mantlets no I guess this is the part that goes underneath our mantlet and this is the rotating section not a lot there, but our gun tube will go on. And there's a little hole right there in the sprue where they molded the, uh, the hole in the end of the gun tube. There's some little flash right there, but that's okay. I mean, it's easily sandable. Huh. It's kind of slide molded. What do you think of that? And our commander's hatch. And we have a 50 caliber machine gun here. There's the ammo box and tray for it. And we have a 30 caliber machine gun as well. And it has the ammo box molded straight onto it. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And we also have... Oh, well, let's do these first. Look at our tracks. As you can imagine, these are very small. And they look like they're the melt-over type. We haven't got to the instructions yet, but I see four holes and four pins put that together there which <laughs> have to see how that works out for us not a lot of detail there I mean we do have our guide horns on the sides you can see the end connectors but there's not any real serious detail there not at this scale um, we do have our tre tread detail though that's okay it seems to have a piece of track missing right there. See that? So, it'll be fine. So, you got two of those. And then we have our decals. I think. If I can get them out. And they are taped, which some people get annoyed about that, but I, I don't. Because, I mean, except that I can't seem to get in there to split it. But, I mean, how many kits have you opened up and then the protective film not be over top of the decals there? So I think it's a good idea that they did that. So we have our stars. Dragon Lady. <laughs> so they... Well, they're... Trumpeter decals. 
not particularly thick and not too thin. Uh, so you never know how well these are going to go on until uh, you actually try to put them on. So we'll be finding that out. So those are our decals. We'll set those aside. And then we'll take a look at our instructions. Got the vehicle. Uh, it is a stapled booklet, uh, but the picture of the vehicle on it there, read before assembly. We have our key that tells us what each one of these uh, emblems is going to tell us to do. And decal application. Instructions for that. I'll just go over this quickly because we're going to be building it very soon. A. We have our sprue uh, map here. Decal sheet. Tracks. And of course our lower hull. There it is. Step one, very simple. Uh, they show us first here attaching these completed bogey assemblies there on both sides. Or you can skip over and do this section here where you assemble the uh, left and the right uh, bogies. Step four, uh, the rear engine access along with our air cleaners, our towing panel, and also those little side skirts that I pointed out before. Upper hull, we've got two headlights to go on. And then here is those plates right there. They're showing you the angle uh, where you take and you mount these on at the angle that they should be at. That's good. Side profile there. And then we have our upper hull. And of course, at any time, if you want to take a longer look at these, you could just pause the video. Then we have our turret, step seven, with both our main armament and our machine gun. And even though there's a 30 caliber machine gun in there, it doesn't show us assembling that. Um, track construction. It says the tracks in this kit can be glued using plastic cement. So, hopefully that works. And the tracks can be painted using plastic paints. If track is broken, strengthen with, a, with staples or thread. <laughs> Let's hope we don't break it. And then we can uh, uh, put our turret on. It also gives us instructions here on how to make an antenna by stretching sprue. And uh, put your tracks and your turret on, you're done. Over here we have our painting diagram. So basically, it's all Mr. Colors. Talking about olive drab. And metal black. And then our decals. And that's it. That's all there is. So, okay. <laughs> that is a really small tank. Uh, should be fun to build. Probably won't take too long to do. Uh, <laughs> not very many parts when we start dividing up well, which road wheel sets that we're going to actually use. Um, and, and bogeys, you know, on, on our build. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that should look good in our LCM3. Uh, once we get it complete. So kind of a, a double build between the two, the LCM-3 and then this M4 Sherman tank too. So uh, special thanks to all my subscribers because of you guys. I keep making these videos and I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope today I earned your subscription. So look forward to us building this uh, M4 uh, in our next video. So until then, you guys stay safe.